And then there were 10. The top masters and adaptive athletes are heading to Madison. New faces dominate on the men's side. Experience shines through for the women and defending champions send a message in the adaptive divisions. We recap the final weekend of virtual semifinals next on Game Central. Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of Game Central. I'm Sean Woodland and today we're taking a look back at the second week of the Age Group Online Semifinals and the Adaptive Online Semifinals. In the Masters categories, the athletes ages 50 to 65 plus competed and all the Adaptive categories were in action virtually this last weekend. And let's start with the Masters. In the 50 to 54 year old division, Clint Paddock takes home first place by 56 points over Sean Patrick. In the 55 to 59 year old age group, Leonardo Wernsback Lima out of Brazil. He is your top finisher. And Tom Famery takes the 60 to 64 year old division with a total of 484 points. And it's Tom Mulbier who is the top qualifier in the 65 plus age group. Your top performers over on the women's side. Taya Gebby beats out Cheryl Brost by 32 points for the win in the 50 to 54 year old division. The UK's Joanne McCullough is your top qualifier in the 55 to 59 year old division. Shelly Chappie had four top five finishes to win the 60 to 64 year old division. And it's Pia Gund out of Sweden who takes the 65 plus age group. There are going to be some great matchups and storylines to watch in the Masters divisions as we get to the CrossFit Games in just a couple of months. And let's start in the 50 to 54 year old division. The Taya Gebby got the best of Cheryl Bross, but they were the only two athletes in their age group to score more than 500 points. They won five of the six events between the two of them. This will be Gebby's first appearance at the Games. Brost, meanwhile, has a ton of experience. She is a 10-time qualifier and an eight-time CrossFit Games athlete with Games experience across three different divisions, including the individuals. On the men's side, it paid to be on the younger side of things. Every winner from this past weekend aged up into their divisions. Clint Paddock and Tom Mulbier were the only two winners who didn't finish first in any event. Despite that, Paddock had a 56 point margin of victory, the largest we saw in any of the men's divisions. You just cannot have the CrossFit Games without Lynn Knappen. She qualifies for the 12th time in her career. She finished fifth overall in the 60 to 64 year old division. Knappen is out of Australia and she's still looking for her first games championship. She has been on the podium twice. Her best finish was second. That was in 2015 when she was in the 55 to 59 year old division. And in that division, it looks to be very competitive in Madison this year. McCullough gets the victory in the semifinals, but she will have to hold off some talented veterans in August. Cece Fogery is a two-time games athlete. Shanna Bunce was fifth overall in the division last year. Linda Elston has competed as a master at the games every year since 2012 and finished seventh in the 55 to 59 year old division last season. And then Lori Mashiznik finished fifth in the semifinals, but she is the two time defending champion in the 55 to 59 year old division. There were a handful of champions who did not make it into the CrossFit Games this year. Some of them choosing not to compete, others just did not qualify. Kevin Kester in the 50 to 54 year old division just didn't compete this year. Vincent Deephouse finished 24th place in the semifinals in the 55 to 59 year old category. Tia Vesser, Susan Clark, both not competing this year. Mary Schwing didn't make it in after semifinals. She finished in 16th place in the 65 plus division. And then Patty Faya withdrew from competition in the 65 plus division as well. Congratulations to all the athletes who qualified for the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games in the Masters Age Group. We really look forward to watching you compete here in Madison, Wisconsin. Let's move over to the adaptive divisions and some of those divisions actually crowned champions out of the semifinal. Haley Malakian and Landon Payne take the intellectual category. Payne won by just 10 points over Maximum Morrison. Costa Rica's Amalia Ortuño won five of the six workouts to get the win. Kevin Ogar won the first three workouts and never finished lower than sixth. Satara Emazada and Timothy Murray are your top finishers in the short stature category. And David Millings wins by just five points over Chris Fair in the vision category. For a closer look at the divisions that we just listed, here's the man who won the seated with hip category, Tom Yazga. Thanks, Sean. And what a weekend it was for our adaptive semifinalists. 
I gotta admit, those workouts ended up being way more demanding than they looked on paper. I am definitely still recovering. It was a great weekend. From long grinding couplets to new movement standards on common movements, it was a full comprehensive test of fitness. The top five athletes in the standing upper, standing lower, and neuro division will be moving on to the games in Madison this summer, but we did crown 10 new Fittest on Earth athletes all within their respective divisions. Let's take a little closer look. Kicking things off with a bang was our men's vision division as two gentlemen out of the United Kingdom put together a competition that came down to the very last barbell. Chris Fair and your now fittest on earth David Millings separated themselves from the field right away on day one, but only each other by five points when the dust settled on Sunday afternoon. Tied through three events, Fair would go on to take both events four and five ahead of second place Millings. However, keeping his composure, flexing his strength, Millions would end up posting a winning clean and jerk of 216 pounds to not only take the event win, but also to secure him the title of fittest on earth. As we've heard so many times before, consistency is key, and Millions proved it again, never taking less than third in any event across the weekend. Jump over to the other side of exciting and check out this near Tia-like performance from Amalia Ortuño. Competing in the women's seated with hip division, Ortuño has quickly made a name for herself in the adaptive CrossFit scene, and she clearly looks to add fuel to that fire. After winning both the 2021 and 2022 Open, Amalia left no doubt why she is the fittest on earth, taking home five event wins across a six this weekend. Not to mention she was narrowly reps short of completing that full clean sweep and clearly proving that she has no wheelhouse whatsoever. Or maybe it's a wheelhouse to win everything, who knows? Last week I mentioned a close battle was brewing in the men's short stature division and they did not disappoint. Timothy Murray came out of the gate strong, winning both events one and two on the first day. Winning the shortest of the workout of the weekend, Ingrid, by 30 seconds, Murray outdid himself by winning the longest workout of the weekend by 50 seconds, proving that any approach to his endurance was ready to stand the test. Timothy would go on a tie for the top spot in event five after performing 280 wall balls and then close out the weekend with his second third place to finish in event six. Oh, and did I mention that he's only been a CrossFit gym for less than a year? This former kettlebell sport athlete can now call himself the fittest on earth, but he may be starting a bigger legacy than we all know. And who would have thought the great Ricky Bobby could ever be wrong? If you're not first, you're last, right? Well, Haley Malakin has other ideas. Now, I've already mentioned consistency a few times, but Haley might be our prime example. The 26-year-old competing in the intellectual division is officially the fittest on earth after she's proving that second can be better than first. Training out of CrossFit Throne in Lubbock, Texas, Malakin captured her title by taking second in five of the six events in the semifinal. Let's throw in an event win in Ingrid by over a minute, and this stellar performance for Haley is an incredible exclamation point to her near championship performances in the past. Having taken second in the 2021 Open and fourth in this past 2022 Open, this is definitely a big turn for Haley, and we are super excited for her. Finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention CrossFit's very own Kevin Ogar. Kevin has a storied career in CrossFit, competing in regionals on three separate occasions prior to his accident in 2014. The CrossFit L1 trainer and seminar staff member, along with district affiliate rep, took command of the seated without hip function division right out of the gates, bringing home the event win in the first three workouts. Fun fact for you, this former international para power lifter had no problem with the bench press in event one, not putting the bar down once, and going unbroken in that gruesome workout. Ogar posted a smooth second place finish in both events five and six in the final day to guarantee him the title of fittest on earth. Now, as a close friend of Kevin's, I have to tell you this title has been a long time coming. While it may not look the same as you envisioned 10 years ago, Kevin, I hope you know that we are just as proud of you today. While I could go on and on about all of the fittest athletes on earth here this weekend, I do want to take a second and congratulate all of the competitors in the semifinals this past weekend. Hopefully this was the historic beginning to many great opportunities for the adaptive fitness community to continue to grow within the sport of CrossFit. I know I'm humbled to be a part of it and I hope that you are excited to join us in the future. And that being said, I can't wait to see my fellow adaptive athletes in Madison this summer. Sean, who's gonna be going on with us? Tom, congratulations and congratulations to all the other champions out of the semifinals in those adaptive divisions. Now, here are the divisions that will be deciding a champion in Madison, Wisconsin. 
Annie Laurie Cottonso and Casey Acree are your top qualifiers in the upper extremity division. Valerie Cohen and Charles Pinar are the top seeds in the lower extremity division. And Alyssa Cabela and Brett Horchard both finished first in the semifinals in the neuromuscular category. Casey Acree dominated the upper extremity division. He won four of the six events and never finished lower than sixth. He heads back to Madison looking to defend the championship that he won last year. Valerie Cohen, she turned in a similar performance in the lower extremity division. She also won four events. Her worst finish was fifth, and she is, as well, the defending champion from last year. And finally, Brett Orchar in the neuromuscular division started off the semifinals red hot. He won the first three events. He also had a pair of second place finishes. Orchar is looking to win his second straight CrossFit Games championship this year. We are currently in the fourth and final week of in-person semifinal action for the individuals and the teams. After that, it's the last chance online qualifier. That starts June 29th and runs through July 1st. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the first four episodes of Miles to Madison. Those are available now on the CrossFit Games YouTube channel. And the CrossFit Games 2021 documentary is available for pre-order now on iTunes. It's going to be available in 39 different countries and will be premiering on July 5th. That is going to do it for this edition of Game Central, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the weekend semifinal action, and we leave you now with a sneak peek at the 2021 Fittest on Earth Next Gen documentary. I go to the gym every single day. I treat my craft as a profession. I would argue the fact that I am just as professional, if not more, than another athlete that is going to a sport that has been around for hundreds of years. I dedicate my life to this. The test at the CrossFit Games is everything. If you're gonna make a claim of the fittest on earth, which is a massive claim, have to make sure that that test is well thought out, well planned. It's not about who's the toughest athlete, it's about who's the fittest. How can we throw this many events at people and still allow them to recover enough to really put the best foot forward? To be a top level athlete, it takes everything. You gotta put that first over everything you're doing in your life. You cannot part time this. You have to dedicate your life to it. And even that may not be enough. I don't think there's any reason why I can't win the CrossFit Games. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think I could win. A lot of things were going through my head. After birth, I still remember I could not walk downhill with the stroller. Now all of a sudden, podium was realistic. You've also got this development where you're starting to get these younger athletes. Kids who have been doing CrossFit since they've been in elementary school. Mal O'Brien, we saw her stare right in the face of the reigning women's champion and not blink. The young, upcoming, new blood of the sport. It's like if you want a shot at winning the games, this is this is where we take them. Like this, this has to be a W. This year I came here to win. Oh, Horvath now pulling even with Toomey. Goddamn! has it! McDonald's oh, will stand wow. it up! So that was like a huge opportunity for me to come and try to, to get some points on him. Drop yourself 20 spots, lose 60 points, you're out! At that point, I wasn't concerned about my elbow, like I just wanted to finish the games. It was the most exciting that I felt in a CrossFit event. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to win this. Four seconds to go! 